So when a patient with a disfigured eye like this comes to your OPD uh, asking for better cosmesis, the options are a prosthetic contact lens or corneal tattooing or evisceration and ball implant, the latter being a very radical procedure and not accepted by many patients. So what is the advantage of uh, giving a prosthetic lens? It's basically non-invasive, very easy to wear and remove whenever the patient desires to, but it requires compliance and there are hygiene issues. Corneal tattoo, on the other hand, is an invasive procedure. However, the most important point is that when the opacity, uh, when the patient does not wear the lens, the opacity is going to be visible, and hence corneal tattoo is more like a permanent procedure and hence preferred. So any patient in a non-seeing eye who presents you with a corneal opacity or corneal edema after a failed graft with poor prognosis for a repeat graft or decompensated corneas because of silicon oil after VR surgery, leukocorias like pupillary membranes or uh, complicated cataracts, iris defects, and large peripheral eye detectomies in which uh, it acts as a therapeutic indication if the patient has a lot of glare and diplopia. So the um, technique which was described the most um, ancient technique is actually the chemical method in which uh, pigments like gold chloride and uh, platinum chloride are used along with fixative agents like hydrazine hydrate. Then came the coloring methods. This can be uh, done with the help of commercially available powders from like say the Mahatme uh, powder or preparing a carbon suit in the operation theater with the help of a candle or India ink or any tattoo dye which is used for the skin tattooing. So the techniques of application are superficial application of the pigments or transepithelial interstromal mi micropunctures with the help of a 30 gauge needle. However, this does not work very well, it doesn't last. Intrastromal lamellar pocket technique works extremely well. You can make the pocket either by the manual technique or with the help of a microkeratome or even a femtosecond laser can be used and the use of a tattoo gun. So this is a video of a lamellar pocket technique. Uh, what you do is make a very superficial incision and then using your crescent knife and your lamellar dissectors, you make a very superficial pocket. Make sure that the pocket is very superficial so that not much of the opacity is going to be seen over your flap. You can use any liquid dye or suit or any powder and use your dissector or an iris repositor to put it inside the pocket. If you have a limbus to limbus opacity, then you can do it just as you do your manual dissection and dissect by using the specialized dissectors. After you do this, supposing you feel that there's some opacity over your uh, flap, then just use the needle to do micro punctures. And if required, you can suture the incision. So this is a patient with uh, post VR surgery and this is a picture, uh, six weeks post-op. Here the tattoo powder was used. In this patient, this is a two and a half years of years follow-up. Here the carbon suit was used. This is a patient post VR surgery. I debrided all this and there was a edematous cornea underneath. I tried to achieve a brown uh, shade for the iris and a central back pupil by using the liquid dye. We next come to the tattoo dye technique. Uh, I thank Dr. Aditya Pradhan for introducing us to this technique and uh, helping us get this uh, machine from China. However, we have some brands available in India too. This is basically the assembly with the adapter and this is a tattoo gun and there's a disposable needle which has to be placed on it. Uh, here you have to go on to and come to the eye settings and then adjust the speed of the needle, attach the needle here and then adjust the depth of the needle. You can use any commercially available tattoo liquid tattoo dyes, but uh, this brand somehow works very well. After you debride the epithelium, just place a tiny drop of the tattoo dye on the surface. Check the movement of the needle before you start the procedure, and just use it uh, in you know in a line like a little bit of a angulated um, manner so that you're not very uh, deep into the cornea. And uh, this movement just helps to impregnate the dye into the stroma and you just wash uh, wash this off with saline and then just repeat this procedure three to four times until you're happy with the outcome and then just place a bcl at the end of the procedure so this is a patient with a lot of spheroidal degeneration i did a debridement use edta to remove the band shaped keratopathy and use this tattoo gun and this is the outcome this was a patient with a complicated cataract post uh, CRVO and I use the same procedure for him. This is another patient with a post VR surgery. Similar case. This is a young child with a with two failed grafts and advanced glaucoma. This was a patient with a pupillary membrane. 
so we then come to uh, uh, the surface application of chemicals actually this was the oldest technique which was uh, which was described however i shifted to it the most lately uh, you can use gold chloride and platinum chloride these are commercially available the gold chloride concentration can be 2 to 5% and platinum is preferred for 2% you have to reconstitute them in distilled water and refrigerate and whenever you want to use it for your surgery you have to autoclave them even hydrazine hydrate is available commercially you just have to make sure that your dilutions are right so you debride the epithelium and then you can use either a gauze piece or a filter paper like a watman filter paper or i just prefer to use this ring uh, to hold the dye just put a few drops wait for a minute then you put your hydrazine hydrate and then you get your desired color uh, platinum chloride gives a jet black color and gold chloride gives a a brownish color after washing you can repeat the procedure i'm just using a trifine here so that uh, just to show you what all you can use uh, to hold the dye just make sure this doesn't spill onto the conjunctiva i wanted to give it a slight brown color so i'm applying gold chloride here followed by hydrazine hydrate and then application of a bcl so this is a patient one and a half year post operatively again post vr surgery you can see that there's a slight fainting of the dye however on external uh, appearance is is very good another patient with the same condition you can see the brownish shade of the gold chloride powder here so the complications are loss of tattoo color this should be expected in 10 to 15 percent patients persistent epithelial defect can be seen a few patients so i prefer to put the bcl for at least a month some patients have a persistent uh, congestion and an inflamed eye and they need topical steroids for a longer time basically we give topical steroids antibiotic and lubricating eye drops for a month and recurrent corneal erosions are very rare these are a couple of patients with the loss of the tattoo dye with the liquid tattoo dye and this was a patient in which the surface uh, application of chemical agents was used and the patient had a persistent epithelial defect and a very early loss of this color this is a patient uh, very recently done and she had a um, little bit of an edema, corneal edema and few DM folds so I had to hike up the steroids. So in summary, corneal tattoo is an excellent cosmetic option for disfigured eyes. The surgical techniques are evolving and they do give good results. However, one has to counsel the patient about the possibility of repeat surgery and one should avoid vascularized corneas because they definitely have a very early loss of pigmentation. And some patients with silicone oil in the eye, post-retinal surgeries, they also have an early loss of pigmentation. Thank you for your kind attention.